Hey, this is Rick again, Bike Fitness Coach. So today we've had an issue <clears throat> with the kicker bike bottom bracket. So we're gonna go ahead and change the bottom bracket out today. The tools you will need <clears throat> are a five millimeter Allen wrench, a tool to take the bottom bracket uh, itself out, this, for example, is the Shimano TL FG32. I'll show you how that works in a minute. A breaker bar, in case you need a little more leverage on this tool. And a five millimeter hex on a torque wrench and some gloves and, and a rag. <clears throat> Before we get started, this is the setup and as you can see there's a lot of rust coming out from the bearing itself it's completely shot when i ride this bike the sweat drips down you can see the streaks right into the bottom bracket bearings gets inside and it looks to me that they're completely rusted uh, we're going to take this apart to see what we find, but uh, probably inside this shell is going to be a lot of um, a big pool of sweat. So on the drive side, the same thing happens. It runs down inside here, running down here into the bottom bracket down there. You can see rust on that side as well. So we're going to fix this today. <clears throat> the tool is meant to grab these recessed areas. Uh, Park makes one, but what's nice, uh, what was nice is that uh, Shimano years ago, they used to deliver, they used to give you one of these tools with every Dura-Ace bottom uh, crank set that you purchased, which included the bottom bracket. So that's what you received uh, they don't do it anymore. I luckily have two of these. Uh, I'm not going to get rid of them. They're invaluable and they fit this <clears throat> right here. If you notice the green, uh, when I got this bike, I prepped it. I packed all of the little um, screws and nuts and bolts with, with grease so they wouldn't rust up uh, because I knew what would eventually happen. So let's get, uh, let's get started. So the first thing we need to do is remove the, actually loosen up, we need to remove the non-drive side crank arm. So we're gonna loosen up the five millimeter bolts on the pinch bolts is what they're called on the non-drive side. All we have to do is loosen these. There's two, one on each side, just like a Shimano crank has. The reason we're doing this is twofold, is to number one, loosen it up enough where we can get the crank off, the crank arm off, as well as loosen up this is a, another um, preload where if these are pinched, you won't be able to turn this. So step one, uh, loosen the pinch bolts. Step two, we're gonna loosen up and remove the preload. Again, this is the first time we're taking this apart. So there's preload nut. Set that down, and we can start taking a look at what we have. Check the bolts, loose enough. You don't need to remove these all the way, but just loose enough where, where the crank will, <clears throat> the crank arm will start coming off. That should be good. Get 
Yes, look at the, I would say that bottom bracket is uh, about done. Don't worry, we're gonna clean all of this up before we put it back together again. And now, the way the tool works is always if you are looking at the bottom bracket shell itself and the bearings, uh, the cups will rotate. You'll rotate the tool forward to loosen. So uh, the non-drive side, you will turn it counterclockwise to loosen. The drive side, you will turn it clockwise to loosen. And uh, that will take, so both, both uh, bearing cups rotate forward to loosen them up and to remove them and rotate backwards to uh, tighten them exactly opposite of the pedals. The pedals, you put the tool in and you push down, have the tool back, and uh, they come off the other way. So let's see, yeah, it's pretty tight. I'm gonna have to use two hands, so I'll come back in a second. Okay, I had to use the breaker bar over the, over the end of the wrench and give it a little, persuasion to start coming uh, loose so let's keep let's keep this moving so again counterclockwise to loosen the non-drive side and I found some uh, Wahoo was nice enough to replenish a new bottom bracket set but what we're gonna do is, I do have some other bearings we'll talk about in a little bit to see what's the best way to put this back together. So I'm not gonna throw any of this out. So here is the bearing and cup. So yes, quite a bit of rust. We will um, take this apart later on and see what is actually inside. But you can see quite a bit of rust in here. And here's the axle. We're gonna have to clean this all up as well. So stay tuned and we're going to move to the other side. All five of these, what they call on bicycles, chain ring bolts. As you see, they're very, still very resistant to turning. There it is. They're just locked on with, a, I bet, a lot of, a lot of thread locker. I mean, that is still tight. <clears throat> That's really tight. So I'm gonna, instead of spending uh, five minutes trying to loosen these all up, we're gonna remove these so basically you're going to go kind of in a pattern loosen 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 just keep going around and eventually this will come off kind of keep them all even but this is going to take a little bit of work so i will come back uh, when this is just about ready to come off okay that uh wasn't cutting it so i had to step it up a little bit and let's go with this tool instead. Five millimeter on a ratchet. So lock it in here. This is the one that is really fighting us. There we go. So I recommend this instead of the Allen wrench. But you can start seeing all the dried sweat coming off of this. Almost there. There 
there's one. This was the one that was really stuck. Combination of sweat and uh, thread locker. Two. First, we're going to clean all these up, put a little bit of grease on them before we put them back together. But there they are. And now this should come this should come right out. But it looks like we need yet. loose but it's loose but it's stuck in the axle is loose but it's stuck in the bearing on uh, on the bearing cup on this side so now we need yet another tool and anybody who's going to guess what we're going to pick we're going to get a piece of wood and a mallet or we'll just use a rubber mallet bang on this side over here and see if we can get this out. So I'll be back in a second with yet another tool. Um, any mechanics out there, they know definitely you bring all the tools with you and you always gotta make four more trips out to the shop to pick up the other stuff to get the stuff out that's stuck. So I'll be back in a second. Okay, if anybody is counting, that's the second trip out to the uh, shop. And uh, this is the next tool you will more than likely need. I'm gonna do, <clears throat> I'm gonna bring it on over on this side here. There we go. That's all it needs. And it's still stuck. You gotta wiggle these in. Sometimes you need another. <clears throat> so let's try this now. Just going to take a little finesse. It's going to need two two hands, so I'll be back in a second again. Okay, after a third trip to the shop, I had to get this, which goes in this side, and I had to, now it fits perfectly, and you can start seeing the rust coming off this side. This was preventing it from being removed. So there is, the axle, which we are going to have to clean up, but you can see where the bearings run on the axle. And there's this one, so here we go, we're going to remove Okay, I had to remove a lot of the screws on this side to give me enough room to shove the bearing wrench 
down inside so I can get to it. But uh, there we go. They didn't want this to come apart, did they, Wahoo? And there is the other cup and the bearing. And it looks pretty... It turns, but barely. Yeah, this side, the non-dry side is the one where it feels like it's really rough. So this had to be a side that was squeaking. So this bearing is completely shot. This one is still okay, but we're not gonna reuse any of them. So here is what it looks like. And it does appear there is a drain hole, which is good. I'm glad Wahoo has done that. There is the drain hole right in there. Pretty good sized drain hole, keeping the sweat and water out. So we're going to clean all this up and uh, start putting it back together again. All right, back again uh, off camera. I basically greased, cleaned up the chain ring bolts and greased them. Cleaned up the axle. There was rust all in the splines. Cleaned up, added a little layer of grease. So let's talk about grease real quick. This was recommended to me by another bearing manufacturer. If you use this stuff, this is made boat, trailer, and equipment grease. This grease is meant for uh, boat trailers that you back into marinas and uh, the, the whole wheels and most of the trailer is submerged in seawater. So this stuff is uh, recommended for those type of bearings and uh, if it's recommended for those, it should be good enough for an indoor bike. Uh, you notice the blue tape, the, um, the glue was coming off, uh, so I re-glued it. There's some pads on the back side, re-glued it, and it's taped, uh, waiting for the glue to dry. I found some old um, ceramic, hybrid ceramic bearings um, on my daughter's old bike that was just laying around. So I greased those up, cleaned them up, and we'll install these now. Remember counterclockwise to tighten on the drive side and clockwise to tighten on the non-drive side. Got the gloves on because of the uh, grease. Grease is everywhere. grease on the outside here hopefully that will prevent a little bit more of the sweat from going in and then on this side as well some rust here so I cleaned that all up. I put a little bit of grease into each of the chain ring bolt holes so that should be good uh, to go. And again I had to loosen this up so I could get the wrench in.
tight. And then this side. Now for this piece, should go in a little bit easier than before. Yep, look at that, nice. And then I'm just basically gonna line all of this up and put the chain ring bolts in. Again, it requires uh, three hands to, one to hold this and two to hold the uh, screws and the crank. So we'll come back in a minute when I get those started. Okay, back again, we installed the chain ring bolts. Basically the way to do this is you reach back here, you get these lined up, and you pull on the outer ring where the uh, drive is, pull it out, attach the bolt with a um, five millimeter or the wrench, now it's all set on this side. You can see the new bearings in there. And all I did on this side, grab the wrench, is we just installed, put the uh, crank on. And then what we do, do next, install the preload. You change. Okay, just I just set the bike back down again in its uh, normal position so I can finish this up. But we adjusted the preload. And then to finalize the next step, make sure that the pinch bolts are tight. One bolt. Normally you have to go back and forth tight 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 uh, shimano recommends 12 to 15 newton meters just snug these up and there you go no squeaking sounds good nice and solid and everything's back together the way it was as brand new hopefully that was entertaining for you it was for me and see you out on the road or in Ruby.